bloody day, Sharp. Bloody day. How many have you lost? Thirty-two, sir. How many do you have left? One hundred and twenty can still do duty. Eighty-six still in strength, but maimed or sick, or or being made to in hospitals. You're expecting replacements, of course. Yes, sir. From Second Battalion, Chelmsford. Lord Fenner, Secretary of State at War, works to the Secretary of State of War. I don't know what a war is, of course. Politicians, Sharp, they're not fit to lick your jakes out. What am I supposed to see, sir? Oh, down at the bottom, some mention of the South Essex. Second Battalion, now a holding battalion. I get many men from a holding battalion. A few boys, perhaps. Wounded man waiting a replacement, if you're lucky. Non draft available. Uh, recruiting parties last I heard. Well, I can't be black and white. Fenner says you've got no replacement, so there you are. He says something else. Your regiment's to be broken up. What? Lord Fenner suggests that your men be given to other battalions, that your colours be sent home, and that your officers either exchange themselves into other regiments, sell their commissions, or make themselves available for our disposal. They can't do it. Oh, it is a pity, I agree. Wellington was rather hoping to have the South Essex in France when we get there. Seems to think you might have been useful. Who's in charge, 2nd Battalion? Who's in charge, Chelmsford, man? Girdwood. I think Colonel Girdwood. You know him? Never met him in my life, sir. Authorises you and Harper to go to Chelmsford and select replacements. Want the South Essex to die? Oh, well. Go to Chelmsford. Find men. If there are none there, then find others. Save the regiment. Sharp? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, horse guards first. Let them know you're there. No. They'll know, sir. Davis! Come on, keep up, keep up! Sergeant Major's dead, sir. Your bugger's gone, has he? You've got his job, Arthur. Harris, give him his rank. Seven hundred men, Pat. Seven hundred drawing rations and pay, and that's official. Where are they? Chelmsford. Where they're supposed to be. Mounted. Oi! You! Drummer boy! You leave us. Do you have such a thing as an officer of the day? Of course. Who is it? Well, actually, me. Actually, you. Yes, Captain Carline. And you are? I'm Major Richard Sharp, South Essex. <clears throat> You've heard of me. Uh, uh, yeah, um, you, you took the French Eagle at Talavera, sir. But you haven't heard of a guard detail. Sir? Why wasn't there a guard on the gate? 
Uh, what, um... I don't know, sir. You don't know? You're officer of the day. No guard mounted. What do you do when you're not playing blind man's buff dancing pumps? Shoulders <laughs> square! Shul! What you see is Mr Harper parading your men. He is the sergeant major of the 1st Battalion. What I will have you do is parade for him as awkward squad every hour from six o'clock this evening until he tells me you're ready. I'll get a shift on, man! Move yourself! Now, Mr. Carline, pray you count me that cocktail crew on the square. Straighten up! Eleven. Straighten up. It's funny. At horse guards, I was told gospel you would draw a ration and pay for seven hundred. Everybody now in an orderly what? line. Face forward! Shoulders square. Where is the second battalion? I don't know, sir. Who commands it? Colonel Girdwood, sir. Come with me. Badge. You sure it was a recruiting party? One of ours, sir. Sergeant Avacamp wore our badge, but the recruits never got here. We haven't had a new lad in six months. Ah. Up it all. Why would they want to go hide in the battalions? I think this war's out of my wits, Patrick. Mm. Oh, well, uh, probably not. What are you? Truth to tell, uh, not quite sure. On this occasion, I'm a galloper with a letter for Major Richard Sharp, which I tap safe about me, but can't now for the life of me. Ah, I have it. An invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid Parliament wishes I had it. <laughs> very good, very good. Uniform fits like a ball of wax, but those boots won't do. He did very well for a colonel of Napoleon's Imperial Guard to kill before he'd give them to me. The yellow line and the carpet. Observe it. Go no further than. Make a knee. Listen, smile, answer briefly, yes, no, or thank you, a word to the wise. Coming back, keep your sword from between your legs. It's not unknown for us to become entangled walking backwards. No. Bravo. Major Richard Sharp, Your Royal Highness, the South Essex Regiment. How'd you do? Hey, uh, Your Majesty. What you say? What you say? Did you say A? He said A. <laughs> what you doing, Rifle Green, if you're South Essex? Have you read? Yes, sir. Sir. Come up. Come up. Come up. Now look sharp. <laughs> <laughs> May I call you Dick? Honoured Your Majesty. <clears throat> call me... Well, call me Your Royal Highness, but look you... Damn me, but I am the one who's honoured entirely. Dick. <laughs> Bloody day! How you fought! How the flames burn the grass! Smoke! 
How the wounded scream as they burn. You slaughtered the French. And the snakes. You see, all the snakes in the grass were slivering away from the flames caused by our cannibals. You see, we were enveloped in flames. Were we not, Dick? Oh, that bloody day. He uh, thinks he was there. Let him. We were, sir. Enveloped in flames. Oh, every detail etched. <laughs> so, Dick, what brings you back to England? I, <clears throat> sir, I'm looking for our second battalion, sir. It's gone missing. Missing? Well, that won't do. And they want to break up the first battalion, sir. Abolish the South Essex. Oh, that won't do at all. Where's Fenner? Lord Fenner! You're the fella. Come up. Dick would know where his men have gone. Oh, come up, Fenner. Dick tells me you want to break up to South Essex. Who knows? Well, he's convinced that you do, you see. You've spirited them off, he says. Oh, no. What well, Dick says you do, though. And Dick wants them back. And what of the second battalion? Dick tells me it's missing. No, sir. It marches on paper. Oh, I never tread there. Not on paper. Oh, my brother Freddy does that. York, Commander-in-Chief, you see. No, oh, very difficult. So, not missing, Lord Fenner? No. The battalion exists on paper, enabling us to assign stray men, men who would not otherwise be paid until they can be found a proper billet. It is a miracle the way it all works. <laughs> Do you hear that, Dick? Not missing, just hiding in the paperwork. <laughs> so... What have we got for Dick instead? We must have a regiment for Dick. He ain't paper. We'll find Major Sharp a new regiment, sir. At once, Fenner. And look sharp about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're in London, Major. At the Rose Tavern. Ooh, best have you out of there before you catch something. Back to Spain, Fenner, where we need him. You'll have fresh orders tomorrow. Salubrious surroundings, and when we took the eagle, eh? Damn me. Was it not hot that day? Very hot, sir. Simerson calls him a bastard son of a peasant whore. Does he intrigue you, Anne? No. Though he's handsome. Oh, he is, he is. Do what best you can to find out what he's after. Major Shaw, perhaps I can help you home. My carriage is outside. My room is some distance away, ma'am. My room is not. Will you not tell me your name now? No. Whores don't. They do. Or I will ask for them again. You just want to boast you've bedded one of Prinny's ladies. No. What have you to do with Lord Fenner? Nothing. But I'll tell you he's a liar. He is. He's a politician. He'd eat the contents of his own gut for money or power. So what's Fenner to you? He is nothing. He uses me occasionally. Do you let him know your name? Yes. Then why not me? You have no need of it. How did you know Lord Fenner was lying? He said my second battalion matches only on paper. It doesn't. No? I've been told they're still recruiting men. I believe it. Are you going to look for them? Of course. Don't. 
Forget your battalion. Don't make Fenny your enemy. Why not? What can he do to me? Kill you. Go back to Spain. I'll be going back to Spain as soon as I can. But I'll be taking men back with me. If you know anything about my battalion, I beg you, tell me now. There are stairs at the back. You will not be seen leave. You clawed at me. Dug your nails in me back, use me. Now tell me what you know. I'm telling you to go. So I says, look up at them, ye bunch of cowardly bastards, and be struck down. Be made of blocks of stone, says I. Ah, but their thread, their thread, the earth shakes with their thread. So with their bayonets twirling and twirling, and the drums go. Plunder, Patrick. Which is half mine. Don't need to remind me. Where are you going to cash it? An old friend. One I've trusted long before our acquaintance. Oh, I'll go with you. No, you won't. There's some in my life I keep even from you. I find myself in your debt, so to speak. Major Sharp seems very determined. How did he perform? Was he churlish, ardent, hasty, bruising, grateful? Don't be absurd. If I find I'm poxed in due course, I shall know you lie. What will happen to him? It is often exciting to wield power at the lowest level, that of life or death. I'm excited. I have sent out death. Give us a penny, mister. Give us a penny. The cheeky sword. Lovely bumbles. There you go, sir. Come on, Neil. Come on. Yeah. What do we want, soldier? Bless your language, Maggie. <laughs> Dear Rice, does yourself. Is this me? Sharpie. Oh, Dick. <laughs> Maggie Joyce. <laughs> I'm not as I was, Dick. I am someone now. Same as you. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I'm trying to be. Well, you must. Yeah. You always told me that. So what is it? It's this. Plunder. Taken only from the French, and only when they'd fought and died. You're a rich man. I will be, with your help. Can you sell them for me? Well, a good price will take longer than a bad one. Can you wait? I've got a year's salary in French gold put by. Take as long as you need. <gasps> You're a lucky one. And to think, when I first saw you, I didn't know whether to drown you or eat you with that skinny. <laughs> Are you going to stay with me? I am. Let's get drunk. I wish you I haven't been drunk. I've felt safe to get drunk since... Since God knows when. <laughs> <laughs> Get down! Pretend that you're drunk! Who are you? Hey! Who sent you? 
South Essex. Dick. Maggie, come here. Come here. Can your boys throw these bodies in the river? They must strip them, burn the claws. But the most important thing is this. Maggie, are you listening? I am. You must pass the word that both men were soldiers. South Essex, as you hear? I hear. And have it said that we are the dead men. Sharp and his sergeant are dead. Come here. I'll take care, dear. So, uh, what do we do with ourselves now that we're no more? Rise again, Patrick. Oh. We're going to find that second battalion. How do we do that? We're going to join the army. not had no dinner. <laughs> Let no man tell me he's not had no dinner. <laughs> For I count that an idiot's crime, as will any officer of the gallant South Essex, which from me regimentals you see I am. No man I ever beat up the glory ever once for his scran. Once this gleaming coin is took a bargain is struck as twixt you and me, his majesty and thee. Bread, six pound at once. And while you're with me, all you can drink. I turns off the tap never. Tis a constant amber flow. Watch the air fill with gold, lads, as I pass my hand over it. What is called bounty? 23 pounds, 17 shillings, and 6 pence, which cannot include this. Well, this is a gift from His Majesty himself, who said to me, yeah, Horatio. Go find me, lads, as we'll fight for me, and catch me eagles as our hero, the gallant Major Sharp. Go in. Come inside, where I may feed my lambs and give them spirit, and his wishes may join. Can I take me dog, sir? Of course, young Tommy does to like you. Glad to have it. Charlie Weller. Charlie Weller. Well, lads, there's ale and plenty. I turns off not the tap ever. <laughs> I know you'll have it. Boy takes it long, soldier. How do you know? I know. Regiment, where'd you serve? 33rd. India. You didn't desert? Wasn't caught, so I didn't. I can't touch it, even if you're lying. Name of? Vaughan. Dick Vaughan. That'll do me. Ever been flogged? Once. Ah, you will have been. Aggy now. I shall watch ye. The foot wrong, Dick. And I'll have the rest of the skin off your back like stripped down daisy as you know I can. Pick it up. Old soldiers never learn, do they? Only one trade these good for. Old snotty like thee. Do you think I'm an Egypt because I'm Irish? I do not. Bless my soul, I do not, Paddy. Take it. No. I won't. Now why not? Be a darling. And tell me why, Paddy. Hmm. Do I get a bed? A bed? Hmm. I'll need a bed to sleep on. Paddy, just for you. There'll be a bed fit for a king. Size of a field. Good. That's great. Because that's what I'll need. 
name. O'Keefe. Come on, Ed. Line up. Line up. Time to get received, sworn, and tested. Declare as medical duty each man of height, weight, physical excellence in every particular fit <laughs> to serve. Done. Come on, lads, straighten up. Now you take care of yourself. Hi, Rosie. Till you drop. Simerson. So who's the girl? His name's Jane. She's grown up now. Still the same. But she only met her once. I'll take you to flat, man. I'll take you to flat. You take the king's shilling. You drink my ale. Get him frag in the ranks! Fight in the ranks! Ooh. They say you served before. Yeah. Why join again if this is the life you must lead? We all have our reasons. I shall mad you till you drop. Oh, I shall. You saw the girl. I loved her and she laughed. It seemed best to come away. You're a fool, Marriott. You won't stop loving her just because you parted. Oh, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you, Dick? I shall tell you. There's a lot worse than this to come. So keep your gob shut. Never look an officer, sergeant, or corporal in the eye. Say nothing but yes, sir, no, sir. Keep very clean and you'll live. Talk! These... These knows better than talk in the ranks. Form ranks! Form two ranks! Form two ranks! By the front! Quick! March! Rifles? Say no foolish pranks by gazing round and talking in the ranks. For there's no other sergeant more charms than see a soldier steady under arms. And when you march, see you labor. To plant that foot with the flam of the tabor. Slow down, damn you! Did you think he could hide from me? I'm sorry. Sorry that you ran away or sorry that I found you? Your aunt has missed your company this past month and I... I have wanted to share some news with you since the day it reached me. Major Sharp... is dead. 
Does the news not fill your heart with joy? It does mine, my dear. Mm. On your feet. Get that dog out of the way, Charlie. Colonel Girdwood, counterboy, dog flesh. Pair of shoes, one. Pantaloon drill pair, one. Shirts, two. Undress jacket, one. Oh, they're a bit big, Sarge. Perfect to me. I'll have that. One. That's about my size, that is. Never stop. One. Stop the buckle. One. Splendid. <clears throat> Sword. Get <laughs> your bloody pantaloons on. You don't want to go parading stark bollock naked afore the sergeant now, do you? He'll swing on him, won't he? Bloody man, cap you! <laughs> Shaco? Kane? Sergeant Havercamp came in this morning. What did he bring? 24 men, sir. Any Irish first their ranks? One of that ilk, sir. Lynch. Set Sergeant Lynch to squad them. and shoot it! Sergeant Lynch. Sir! I can admit fear. Any man who does not feel fear, and I brand him a liar. I was bit by a mastiff when I was a child. Who are you? Name filth! Filth, sir! No, not filth, your name! A filth. thief, sir! You have served. So too have you. Both of you. Regiments? 33rd, sir. 4th Royal Irish Dragoons, sir. Uh, Aaron's Irish Carassiers, sir. The Irish Horse, sir. Hold your tongue! Irish this, Irish that. Who is King of Ireland, you swine? King George, sir. Say it louder. King George, sir. Louder! Louder! King George of England, sir! God bless him! I'll not have Irish tricks. By God, I will not. Blether, blether. I was ambushed by black Irish when I was a young officer. Badly ambushed. You will note this Irisher, Sergeant. 
Note him well. Black as bark. Pardon me, sir, but I shouldn't be dumb fool. I'm told we are deemed to have spent our bounties due to the charge for necessaries, and yet. Valve! That man scum! How dare you, sir? How dare you speak to an officer? Get back and rank! Treat us like animals. We're not animals, we're men. We're not. We're soldiers now. food on the march here. Every drop of ale, too. We even have to pay to black our boots. They're necessaries. Yep. You always get your pay stopped for necessaries. Black ball, pipe clay, laces, soap, tea. You want tea, don't you? I'll kill that Sergeant Lynch for having button shot. You'll do nothing, Charlie. It gets better. Steady. Smart and shiny. Where do they go? Phil, get Berlin! Paddy, morning prayers. One pace forward, march! God save the king. Again, Paddy, Phil. God save the king. One pace backwards, march! Live! Turn! Quick! March! Gentlemen, more champagne? Come away! More champagne. Squad! Halt! Left! Face! Remove your stocks, filth! Yes. 
sakes. Those two, they're a good man then. A rare dozen. What think you of me now, Jane? Am I not a very monostitch of military, science and art? I take beasts and I give them form as heroes. My gratitude to your uncle and Lord Fenner is deep, Jane. They found me languishing on half pay for being ambushed dreadfully in Ireland. That sink, that cesspog. And they plucked me out to place me as I now am. A trainer of heroes, a font of wealth for us all, country and prosperity. And with you, dare I say, love. I dare say you dare, Colonel. I hope you know what you're doing, Girdwood. Sure they won't wilt? They'll all stand, Sir Henry. They'll prove their mettle. And the spavined one, rear rank, third file, second squad, he ain't got two minutes left in him. Do you see? He answers to Brown and will stand. Ha! He knows the names of each one of them. <laughs> Damn if I can tell them apart. Money. Money. You worry me, man. You're not going to live the way you flog yourself every damn thing you do. A loiter. He can take his time. Lynch can't see us from here. Steady. You should not do this to us. <laughs> what? Make us work? Why not? This is work for labourers. We are labourers. Labourers for the king, the politicians, any other bugger I law, even corporals, their heirs and successes. Hear that? Two hours to the chime, gentlemen. And not one man has moved so much as an inch. Nor will they, else they will be flogged. Colonel Girdwood trains them as by the Prussian method, you not, sir? I do, Sir Henry. And now you shall see their paces. Sergeant Major! Carry on! Damn fine husband for you, madame. You may burn powder, Sergeant Major. Forward, march. Make ready. Reason. I think you'll find they're all well-trained men. Excellent fellows. Look at this bastard here. Up, 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 up! Good jaw on him. Damn good teeth. Open your mouth, man! There. Fifty guineas for him. as she seems, it's just there's a colonel. It's you, Major Sharp. Yes. My uncle said you were dead. He would have me dead. 
Why are you here? I came to form my second battalion. Are you still an officer? A major. I saw your name in the Times. They said you were very heroic. No. I got into a cavalry charge because I couldn't stop the horse. <laughs> right. Well, Go on. Will someone try to kill you again? Your uncle would, if I knew I was here. And others too. They're selling men, are they not? They auction them to other regiments. The officers make their bids over lunch. I hate it. They boast at table about it as if they were black slaves they bred up. Size, strength, worse. My uncle said it was legal, but it's not, is it? No, it's not. It's all about money. All money in England, blood and dying in Spain, and I need men. Fifty guineas a man, ten thousand guineas for this field day alone. No wonder they want me dead. Oh, terrible. Yeah, it is. What will you do? Get away from here tonight. But they have militia patrolling from here to Wickford. And fishermen are rewarded for every deserter they capture. We keep a boat in the boathouse. You could cross the river here. They don't guard the north bank. Maybe. Listen, Jane. Yes? Can you leave his money and food? There are two of us. You'll stop the auctions. I shall stop them. With your help. She's attacking Colonel Girdwood. I must stop her. Oh, I do. But he kills dogs. Don't know, Sergeant. Here's a shovel. Don't want this bloody shovel. I want him. Why, I do believe that Phil up and skipped. You Phil! Keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled, Phil. Tools, bury him. 
Ah, Sir Henry, we have the scoundrel. You had better. Is he dead? He is that, sir. Show me. Go on. It's Simerson. Not much of a damned hunt if the quarry's dead before we get here. But better dead than deserted, eh? Eh? How dare you look up at an officer? How dare he? Does worse, sir. This man made to assault me, sir. Which man? Which man? This ramping, stamping... Leathering swash of an Irishman, sir. Irish? Oh, indeed. Irish rogue, Irish dog, Irish scum, Irish filth, Irish man! They would ever sue the Irish. Would ruin me. Would. Did. Ambush. Would have broke a lesser man. Seize Perry secure. Say goodbye to your chum, have you? Why should I? But he can take a flogging as well as the next man. Flogging? <laughs> Ain't no use flogging an old snotty. He'll be killed. Same as ass face down there. See that stake? Hold his bridle so that he sees it. Fair play, fair play. He sees it, sir, don't you, Paddy? When you reach the stake is when we come for you. Now, fair cuts and fair vigorous points, gentlemen. Take this as an opportunity for sword exercise. Better than butcher's carcasses, but uh, less steady. He will run, not stand, for he is an Irish man. Uh, not yet, not yet. We wait on our guests. Ah, Sir Henry! We better, and better catch them both. I'll show them what riflemen can do. No, dummy, they don't. They don't know that, do they? Yeah! Come on! Come on!
see the house? The boathouse. That's where we go. Just awkward for Lord Fenner if those rogues get away. Oh, impossible, Sir Henry. The militia surround the whole island. Fire! Come on! Keep looking, men! Look! Keep your eyes peeled! Hey, come on! No. No, no, I would not. Thank God the powder's wet. Miss Gibbons, you're right. Yes. Oh dear. No, here's the food. Oh dear. I know you would not, of course. The militia are out. Yes. Thank you for this. They'll come here to warn us of the escape. Please, hurry. Sir. You'll stop the auctions. I'll stop them. What will happen to Colonel Girdwood? Will he be disgraced? He'll be finished. Good. Good. I shall not marry him no matter what. Mary? That man? That selfish creature? My uncle demands it. But if he's in disgrace... He will be. Don't you worry about that. Sir. Hurry. I've come back. Will you? Yes. My dear Richard. Sir. Yes. I heard you were in town. And field rang, my word. Is this hero the sergeant I taught to read and write? It is, sir. <laughs> and you have ever my gratitude. How do you fare, sir? Well, I fare well. You? What do you expect here? I wait for the Duke of York. I have a very grave matter to discuss. And the Duke of York must hear me. Well, only if you speak up. He's gone to Windsor. When he returns, I doubt he'll see you. Then I need your help, sir. There's none on which trust more. It is not convenient that you are here. You said this business was urgent. I would hardly have disturbed your lordship otherwise. The business concerns Girdwood. A foul nurse. Auctions. I do not imagine, sir, for one moment that you know of what I speak. Let us assume, though, that you have some influence over those who might. Sir Henry Simerson, perhaps. Let us assume that. Should news of Sir Henry's activities at Falness become public, a mighty scandal will ensue. And you know that it would only need a small one, piled on the ones that have gone before, to have us all out, my lord. Did I know of that which you speak? I would ask you what proof you have. The word of a distinguished officer. What officer? Major Richard Sharp. I knew him as a sergeant. Sharp? He lives? You know him? Of him. I saw the gallant Major today, and he told me all about it. I persuaded him to remain silent for the time being. He has no absolute proof, and agreed to leave the resolution of this affair entirely in my hands. What do you want? I'm sure you have something. 
Major Sharp wants his battalion. There is no battalion, Sir William. Paper only. Of course. Sharp would, were I to offer it, settle for command of a rifle battalion in the American War. America? It could be arranged, I suppose, so long as Sharp remains silent about this preposterous affair. If there is no evidence, my lord, what does it matter if Sharp's silent or not? I really... Just a moment. Men of sense and discretion are rare commodities these days. We must make sure that your talents do not go unrewarded. Which it was Lord Wellington himself. Himself so oppressed, which he said to me, You are the forlorn hope of all our anticipations, Sir so Patrick. Hmm? He said that to me. To me. And we are as we were, when seeking glory on the sanguinary fields of Spain, right down to the dust of my pocket. Lady. I thought it best to meet you here, given the way you've behaved. You're a fool. Mom? You go to horse guards. The horse guards, not being foolish, sent for Sir William, knowing he had been your colonel. You, in your innocence, tell him everything. Sir William is an honourable man. He's an ambitious man. He's clever, too. He chose to speak with Lord Fenner. He went to Lord Fenner? Hmm. Who will reward him with higher office? And you, with a rifle battalion in America? I always trusted him. Trusted no one more. No, oh, he means you no harm. He merely wishes to avoid a scandal. I, on the other hand, wish to destroy Lord Fenner. And you, Major Sharp, are the man who will help me. Why should I want to help you? Why should I trust you when I don't even know your name? My name is Lady Carmoyne. The Dowager Countess Carmoyne. I know all about Simerson and Girdwood. But there must be proof if there's to be a scandal. You must find accounts, letters, anything on paper, and bring it to me. You have a day, two days perhaps, to find written evidence. After that, the camp will be gone, and the men at Falness scattered in a hundred garrisons. Why do you wish to destroy Lord Fenner? He ruined my husband and caused his death. I now pay off my husband's debts by clambering over him and under him when his needs demand I should. I am still in his debt. You may help me pay it. Bring me proof, Major. Shako? Kane? Door. Morning, Smith. Good morning. Uh, where is Captain Smith? Smith! I am Sharp. Major, the 1st Battalion, the South Essex. Until three days ago, Private Vaughan. Outside is my sergeant major. An Irishman you hunted through the marshes. His name is Harper. And that, on your shackle badge, is the eagle he took from the French. With me, that bloody day. You have orders? I command here. Yes. I have orders. Show me your orders. I come direct from horse guards. 
Horse guards? You may not horse guards me, sir. I am well aware of horse guards, and they are well aware of me. Is Lord Fenner secretary at war, or is he not that position, sir? Is the Duke of York commander-in-chief, or is he not, sir? To whom do you look for advancement? Your chief or your friends, sir? I command here. No. I command here. No, no. Yes. Colonel Girdwood, I... Colonel Girdwood is under arrest. And you are under my command. You will confine Colonel Girdwood to his quarters and obtain all papers appertaining to this battalion. Go through this place. Every scrap of paper, every notebook, everything. What you looking at? Filth! God save Ireland. Okay. God save Ireland. Louder! God save Ireland. Louder! God save Ireland! 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 Battalion! To my orders! Who gave you leave to move, you tub of lard? Stand still! Battalion will form line on number one company. Wait for it. Battalion form. My name is Major Richard Sharp of the 1st Battalion, the South Essex. We fight in Spain and are hard pressed for men. Some would have us too hard pressed and would disband us. Our colours put up, our honours and deeds forgotten. Not I. There are more honours to come, more glory to be bitten on, more French to be confounded and slain. I am taking some of you back with me to do these glorious things. We march at first light, rouse at two. And remove those damn silly stocks from your necks. Go on. You won't be charged for the loss. Three cheers, Major Sharp, lads! Hip, hip, hip! Huzzah! Hip, hip, hip! Huzzah! Hip, hip, hip! I don't know what this place is. You're not soldiers. You're crimpers. Skin merchants. Thieves. You may resign. Any of you. But if you do, you will not march with us tomorrow morning. So we're going to Spain. You may not wish to go. You may be cowards and rogues. You may not wish to become officers and gentlemen again. <laughs> if you ever were. Count the money, Smith. Most of the men. They haven't been paid for weeks. Give each man five shillings. 
Forgive my haste, Miss Jane. It seems... You have the ledgers, all you need, sir. Sir, that you are all... Thank you, Mrs. Sir. Gray. Miss Jane, I'm sorry, but it is duty. I ever answer the call of duty with alacrity. I pray you give Sir Henry our most dutiful regards. It will be my earnest pleasure. One day, Miss Jane, duty done, I look to be constant at your side. Anything? No, nothing. Oh, the recruiting forms have no regiment entered on them. Get the clerks to enter where it says regiment. First battalion, the South Essex, on every form. Then they're ours. Oh, and get rid of O'Keefe and Vaughan. All right, I'll, uh, I'll take care of those two swaddies. Gerbwood's gone, sir. He took a horse and he... Where's Gerbwood? Colonel Gerbwood. Sir Henry, where? Sir Henry is not at home. Not so. Compliments to his niece. Miss Gibbons is not... Miss Gibbons? Where's Gerbwood? Not here, Major Sharp. In the library, perhaps. Miss Gibbons. What is it, Miss Gibbons? It is that... Uh, it is that I have defied her. And defied her? I am now a prisoner in this house. Your money and food, I stole it. Why have you come here? I need evidence of the auctions if I want to stop them. And there must be records, accounts. Two ledgers. My uncle made me fill in the figures. But Colonel Girdwood has taken them to London. Damn him. Where in London? To my uncle's house. And where will he put them for safekeeping? I don't know. I've only been once to his house. I don't go to London. Major Sharp, I am not of them. I am the daughter of a saddler. And Sir Henry's sister-in-law. Fit only to be married off for whatever reason suit my uncle. I ran off when I was told I was to marry Colonel Girdwood, but Sir Henry fetched me back and... You're frightened of Sir Henry? Yes. But I do want to help you. Could you find the ledger that would help me disgrace Girdwood? I know. I should take the risk, but if I fail, I shall be punished. By who? My uncle beats me. He let Girdwood watch the last time because he thought the Colonel should know how to treat a wife. He uses a cane. There are marks on his study wall where he thrashes and the cane scratches the plaster. He gets very angry. How dare he treat you so? Yes. I fear it is my lot. It need not be. Jane. Sir Henry hates you. I think he also envies you. Why? You are a hero, Major Sharp. Everybody says so. <laughs> That's foolishness. Oh, no, it is not. I will try to get the books. It is important you have them. Yes. It will help. But I swear, Miss Gibbons, good what he's done for. It is shaming, but I shall need money. It is rare I'm allowed to have any. Yeah. Please, no shame. Get me the books. Bring them to me on the night of Saturday and we shall prevail. You will bear no blame. I will not see you punished. You will not be brought back. I have money. Rank. I'm not very good at running away. Then I shall protect you. I will marry you. I'm sorry. No. No. I must go. Jane. Jane! Come 
Can I trust you, Smith? Yes. I was always uneasy. Always, sir. But I've been purchased over several times. I obtained a captaincy I could not have bought. I know what that means, Smith. Bundle one, bayonet one, cartridge box one, make your mark, sign your name, it's all the same to me, next! Bundle one, bayonet one, cartridge box one, make your mark, sign your name. Next! Richie's pair. Trotter. One. One. Shaco. Tuning. One. One. Richie's Trotter. Pair. One. One. Tuning. Shaco. One. One. We get better at it, Patrick. Buy me some, Philip. As many as we need. Well, what for, sir? To eat, Mr. Carlyle. Oh. Save the feathers. A feather bed for the Prince of Wales. It's his badge, is it not? Now, get them pickets out. Sir. Sergeant, get those pickets out! Present and correct and ready to march, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Major. <clears throat> Company formed up and ready to march, sir. Stand them at ease, Mr. Carline. Company! Stand at ease! Over there's London. That's where we've been marching to. I thought we were going to Plymouth, sir. Not Plymouth. Not yet. Why? I'll tell you later. For now, we're marching into London. So sport some swank. Uncase the colours! We're going to meet the Prince of Wales. My footman has the books. Then give them my footman. I have more to lose than you, sir. Take these to my house. Tell the steward to burn them. Every page. You understand? Where in God's name is sharp? Chatham or Portsmouth, as you understand. We've looked there. Besides, he cannot sail without orders. He must know that. Unless he's mad. He is mad. He is also insolent. I recommended his dismissal when we were in Spain, but my voice was not heeded. Well, I trust you will enjoy the battle, Sir Henry. Evening. Not so hot here as it was at Vittoria, eh? Indeed, <laughs> Your Royal Highness. Hey, up we go, then. <laughs> He's about to burst. He's so huge. <laughs> Which is this, Fenner? Twelfth Light Dragoon, sir. Prince of Wales' own. One of mine, Freddy. Look, my feathers. How many have I got? Got? Got, got. You must have seen a list. What else do you do but see lists, Secretary at War? Lists. I think six, sir, dragoons and foot. And how many's York got? Uh, one, sir, Irish, 101st. Do you hear that? You've only one, Freddy. I've got the whole deuced army, you see.
Evening, Lord John. Pretty much to see our eagle. You will uh, bring it back, sir. I did the last time. She was in my house with her dog. Well, what did she want? The ledgers. She'd come for the ledgers. She said the Jew had sent her. Don't be a damn fool, man. This is Sharp's doing. Sorry. You've come. He's got the ledgers. My uncle's got the ledgers. It doesn't matter. You've took the risk to help me. But your evidence. I've got the men. They'll be evidence enough. Colonel Girdwood was at the house. He saw me. He'll tell my uncle. Listen, you mustn't be afraid. What do I do now? I can't go back. Look, you meet me here after the battle. All right. Major Sharp! Major Sharp? It's Dick! Not your Major! No! Round arms! Three cheers for the Prince of Wales! Hip hip! Hurrah! Hip hip! Hurrah! Hip hip! Hurrah! They're mine! What regiment is that? South Essex. Ah, I thought they only marched on paper. Sir, these are fellows you told me only marched on paper. No, sir, these are the men who fought with you at Talavera, sir. The first battalion back with the eagle you took. Of course. I thought I recognized them. Well, they're mine now, ain't they? Bravo, Dick! Ordered back to Spain, he didn't see fit to go. Not without men. I came for men. He disguised a battalion as a holding battalion, sir. Auctioned the men for his own profit and stole the pay. He is secretary at war. He is a thief. Every word. We'll do this properly. What is your proof of this, Sharp? Hmm? You can substantiate these accusations, surely. I know what you are. I know what Sir Henry is. I've seen for myself, sir. But you have no proof, Sharp. So take heed of this. The South Essex, or rather, the Prince of Wales' own volunteers, <laughs> as we must now call them, will embark for Spain under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Girdwood. You, Major Sharp, will embark for Australia, where you'll command a convict guard. Far too lenient. I would break the ingrate. They don't hardly ever dress at the Antipodes, Sharp. You'll be at home. How many times have I said he get dross from dross? Comes of plucking up from the racks. Never sit easy, do they? I sit like I was bored, sir. <laughs> 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 
you will not, though invited, attend on the Prince of Wales tonight. He's had far too much excitement for one day. Your orders are being written as we speak. Until they arrive, you will wait in the guardroom under arrest. Come! You have the orders? Uh, not yet, my lord. Uh, your wife is here. I have no wife. You'll forgive me, Simon. Please, don't get up, Sir Henry. <coughs> we are not acquainted, General. Nor we are, ma'am. My loss. Uh, do please present me, Simon. My dear Anne, I am engaged on the business of state. Introduce me. General Sebastian Maxwell, I have the honour of naming the Dowager Countess Camoin. Now, I will be obliged if you will wait outside. Major Sharp, you are most remiss. Remiss, ma'am? You promised me this. But I had to find it myself. Your steward wanted to know what he was to burn. And he was still reading this when I arrived. I have the other one quite safe, rescued from the flames as well. It contains letters signed by you, Simon. Get out. Give me those notes. Get out. And you? Out! Lord, I insist this is done properly. Oh, it is being done properly, Sebastian. Were it done any other way, my dear General, there is likely to be the most horrid scandal. Is that not true, Simon? <laughs> Major Sharp. Perhaps you have some few requests to make of Lord Fenner. Requests, ma'am? I assume you want a favour. My own will wait. I only want what Wellington wants. Men to take into battle against the French. I want the Prince of Wales' own volunteers to come with me to Spain. Agreed. I want all my men to get the pay they're owed. I want the 2nd Battalion properly established at Chelmsford. New officers, decent officers this time. I wish to have command given to Colonel Girdwood, sir. You'll serve under him? I will, sir. And I don't wish him to resign his commission before we set sail, sir. Very well. You finished, Major? Indeed, ma'am. Simon, I have two for sale. That ain't all you have for sale. Nor it isn't. But the price I would expect from you would have your shirt off your back long before come to bedtime. <clears throat> you can't afford her, Simerson. Few can. Sharp, you told the truth. The truth, Sebastian, is whatever Lord Fenner and I decide. And for him, it is going to strike devilish expensive. Where do you go now? I have a carriage and I'm feeling generous. I have unfinished business, my lady. Walk on. Whoa! Whoa! <clears throat> you uh, want me, Major Sharp? Not yet. For the moment, I've come for Miss Gibbons. Sir Henry said she'd be flogged till her bones were chalk. Not so. Have you thought? 
about what I said? I have. I don't know you. I... No. Major Sharp. Will you not present your companion to me, Major? I have the honour to present the Dowager Countess Carmoin. Miss Jane Gibbons, ma'am. We are to be married. <laughs> Jane? Ma'am? Miss Gibbons will not take it to miss, I know. If I give you this, ma'am. I was won in battle. My thanks, ma'am. Major Sharp. Prince of Wales, own volunteers! On my command! Two paces forward, march! That do you, sir. Beyond the mountains lies France, Sharp. You will attack behind the battalions, it'll clear the trenches. You'll finish the job, yes? Then, on into France. Sir. Not being a little hard on Girdwood, are you? <laughs> At Falness, sir, Colonel Girdwood gave orders that deserters were to be shot out of hand. I saw one killed. He hunted men through the marshland like they were rats. He wants to see a battle. He'll see a battle. Pay heed! I want no glory hunt. You won't be diligent how you listen for orders. But you can't go wrong if you go forward. Attack. Attack all the time. Never slack. There is the enemy. Face him, front him, and kill him. It needs to be fast work. But if we're slow, he'll come on us. So keep going forward. They have leave to fire on sight. So get them bayonets in. Make it sticking work. French is a sight more fit than we are. Then they must be quaking in terror. Oh, they are, Charlie. They know they face us. Regiment! 
Sharps! Sharps Regiment! What are you waiting for? It's there! Just there! It's Flanders!